Radio. My Sports Radio. Heels. And Barnes. It's a game. Radio. And here's your host, John Intel. What's going on, everybody? It is Wednesday, some day in September. Um, I, don't, I don't even know anymore because they all blend in, could care less. I'm here joined <laughs> by my guy, Daniel Mercado. What up, what up? How we doing, buddy? Phenomenal, and yourself? Oh, great, man. So listen, um, we had a lot. Uh, we have a lot. A ton. On our plate today. Huge uh, plate. Before I leave you with your- Family own, size. Before I leave you with your own radio show. What? Um, I just want to, I want to get into a topic really quickly. Um, I'm, I'm quite excited about, uh, about today's show. So right. here's the thing. I am, uh, I'm online. Okay, we know football started. Everything's great. NFL's here. Jets suck. Cowboys suck. Giants suck. Terrible, terrible, Everyone terrible. Everyone suck. Good and terrible. The Washington team's the best, right? Who cares? <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Nobody called that one. <laughs> no problem. So, I, I'm on. Uh, I'm on another uh, sports page. Dan and I were talking about it earlier today. Uh-huh. I'm on. A, I'm on another sports page and. And you know, I, I'm doing my thing. I'm looking at I'm looking at some comments, you know, whatever. I like to kind of scroll through and see what's what. Um, you know, check things out. And I come across a comment which I thought was actually pretty dope. The guy says, uh, he writes the comment something to the effect of uh week one's done, uh black quarterbacks own the NFL this week. 10, Absolutely. 10 starting, you know, first time we had 10 uh, black starting quarterbacks in the NFL. I was like, yo, that's pretty, pretty cool. Right. Yeah, like, absolutely. okay. Okay. Like, you know, that's, I, 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 I see it. I see it. And so I write on there. I write, dude, that's awesome. Too bad. The quarterback that I have, Dak Prescott sucks. Garbage. Okay. Very generic comment. Like n- nothing personal. I just said Dak Prescott sucks. No big deal. <laughs> Bang. I got hit with the racist comment. Of course. So I Everybody's said... Everybody's sensitivity meter's out the roof right now. So I said, wow. I said, interesting. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Um, I merely said Dak Prescott sucks, not about him as a person, yet I'm a racist POS. Okay, so please do explain. So now, of course, me... You did praise, praise the guy last week on the show. It was amazing. Okay, so uh, listen, for me, what I wanted to do was, as always... I, I brought down, I dropped down the comments because maybe I missed something. I read the headline again because maybe I missed something, right? So I said, okay, let me just make sure that I'm not speaking at a turn here because maybe someone said something super sensitive, right? And nowadays, I mean, listen, you actually don't yeah, have you to. Yeah, you got to read the feed. You have you to read check. everything, yeah, right? It's... Okay, because there's everything is fine print these days. So no big deal. Okay. You know what? I read everything and I said, damn, I didn't say anything. And by the way, the guy who called me a racist was actually a white guy. Interesting. So um, so he hits me with the racist card. I'm going back, and I said, dude, I didn't say anything about uh, Dak as a person. I said, I'm a Cowboys fan, and he sucks. Right? Garbage. Garbage. He was the worst of all the black quarterbacks. So then another guy doubles down on what he said and said, you don't get it. Facts. You're clearly uh, racist, and you, d- and you don't want to hear it. And I, and I said, bro, here are the facts. I would rather have Andy Dalton based on his previous workload bringing Cincinnati to the playoffs four times. I said that last week. And that is all I'm saying. You're only, you're only saying that because Dak is black and Andy Dalton is white. But by the way, my previous comment was there was 10 starting black quarterbacks in the NFL. I'd love to have 
Jackson, any one of the other Murray, nine. <laughs> Wilson, <laughs> Mahomes, bro, please, any of these guys that can throw the ball, run around, uh, uh, Deshaun Watson, bro, any of these guys, any of them. I want any of them. I want any of them except Dak Prescott, who sucks, big donkey, you know what, okay? So I look at this guy, and, and I'm like, here's, here's the problem right now. I'm clearly being baited, right? Because the guy wants me to say something bad. And he wants me to say something. Everybody's a Twitter ninja, bro. Everybody. Everybody's he, a Twitter ninja. He wants me to say something racist. Like, he's like, he keeps going at me, and he wants to keep... And this is where we are today. Where we are today is, is we're going to actually push really good people so far, so far against the wall that somebody is going to say something they, they're going to regret. Now, here's the thing for me, bro. You ain't ever going to catch me sleeping. So don't for one quick second. Because you're not a racist. D- bro, you're not going to. There's nothing you could say to me that's going to get me to say something that I'm going to regret later. Never going to happen, dude. Because the fact of the matter is, is what I'm talking about is the guy's skill set. I'm not talking about him as a person because, quite frankly, he probably is a great guy. For all intents and purposes, seems like he gives back to the community. Cool, bro. So you're not gonna you're not gonna catch me sleeping, dog. He's so, a poster boy for mental health. He wants to make sure he made everybody's mental health as, as well. He wants to make sure that I mean, people know that's a real thing. That's good. That's He's good. A good guy. So now here's the thing. I'm supposed to watch sports. Sports is like the the real epicenter of people's happiness. Okay. Like people, I don't know about that. Uh, there's many, maybe not for us, but there's many in this world that 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 clamor for it because that's that's what makes them happy, right? So they're like, oh my god, my my football, it's religion, right? My Sundays, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't go to church. It I does watch... give you something to, to, okay. to hold on to that that gives you a feel feeling of the norm, bro. Listen, any, with all this COVID going on, any guy like us who puts our family in front of everything else is not going to think that way. But there's other people that will literally not answer you on a Sunday because they're in front of their TV. So what I'm saying is a generic, it is the center of people's worlds for a lot of people, not all, right? So here's the thing. For the last two and a half years, I have spent hundreds of thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars on sports memorabilia, on NFL athletes, 70% of the NFL is black. I'm a racist. On <laughs> on the NBA, 99% is black except for Luka Doncic. I'm racist. Baseball, predominantly Hispanic. I'm a racist. Guys, I don't even really do hockey, and it's the only predominant white sport, so go figure it out. Okay, like I don't really do hockey. So, facts. so I don't watch any sport that involves white people. I watch all the other sports that don't involve any. I'm a racist. I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to go out of my way to conventions to meet them, sit down. And the reason why I do this is because since I was a little boy, they were all superheroes to me. They still are. I watch them. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. This guy's really doing what he's doing, right? But here's where we are today, 2020. I say Dak Prescott sucks. I'm a racist. I'm supposed to watch sports. I'm supposed to watch sports. I'm supposed to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on athletes when I can't actually give my opinion anywhere. So now I'm supposed to sit inside the house. It's just haters, bro. But I'm supposed to sit inside the house and say nothing to nobody. I, I can't even go on a... You say on what a, you want. I, but I can't go on a friendly... That's facts, bro. You sit in four to six hours a week with me. I'm just... Bro, what I'm tired of <laughs> is I'm tired of the, hip, of the hypocrisy that runs everything from top to bottom. Here it is. Dude, if I say something and it does not directly have somebody's actual life in the sentence, say nothing to me, shut your mouth, or come at me with other stats to prove me Absolutely. wrong. Absolutely. Great. You want to tell me that... Uh, numbers never lie. Yeah. You want to tell me, no, you don't get it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Cool, man. I'm, I'm with it. But if you're going to actually tell me you're going to attack me on a personal level because I'm talking about sports. All you're doing is shutting people off. Guys and girls, Thursday night football was down 13%. Monday night football, Dancing with the Stars had a better rating than the NFL. Dancing with 
the stars. You seen some of those people? Bro, I will never, I won't watch any of it. Like Dancing with the Stars, what they're probably so talented, right? I'm, I'm sure they're very, very talented. Uh, great, dude. I like it. I'm not watching it over the NFL. I don't know. But people are watching this. Yeah, sometimes over you want to flick back and forth in between. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, maybe. <laughs> but I would never. It, I would, dude. My TV would be on. My cell phone would be on. Red Zone, whatever it is. I'm definitely tell a lie, apple pie. I'm definitely. I'm glued to the TV. Okay, you're glued to the TV. Hundred percent. So the fact is, is, is Dancing with the Stars, bro. There's a reason for this. There's a reason for this. All I'm saying is, is stop with the bullshit. Enough, dude. Enough. I'm over it. Bro, I want to watch my Sundays. I'm never going to talk about somebody on a personal level. Dude, I'm, I don't care what anybody else does in their life. As long as it doesn't affect another human being in a negative way. Someone can have their own view, say what they want to say, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Nobody I know is in the NFL, is stabbing somebody else. What I'm telling you is, is for me, if I can't put my opinion in on a skill set, I'm out, bro. I'm out. And the problem is, is when I'm out, you're losing a good guy who respects everybody, appreciates what people do, appreciates the hard work, the work ethic put into it, and you're losing a good guy. And the more good people you lose, the more your product loses. And I'm telling you right now, like I said, hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's hundreds of thousands of dollars with one guy. Think a lot of wood. Think about other people out there that are looking and saying, I'm not spending hundreds of thousands of dollars anymore. Bro, so for me, any way you slice it, any way you... First of all, I was out on the Deshaun Jackson comment straight up. I mean, that was pretty hardcore. But, you know... You want to talk about any other thing? I'm in a sports room with other sports fanatics. Cool, man. I'm right in my element. I'm talking about the guys. And you want to? And 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 I'm and now all of a sudden someone people are, are are coming at me and I'm supposed to understand, I'm supposed to enjoy sports? Bro, that's part of enjoying sports for me. Dude, kick rocks. You freaking snowflake cupcake eating little bitch. That's how I feel about it. That's what I wanted to say to him. Take that, take that, take that. That's what I wanted to say to him. Like, bro, you know what, dude? You could sit to the side. You could cry. You could hug your little teddy bear. Get a hobby. Instead of trolling other people online that aren't actually saying bad things. Why don't you find the guy that's saying bad things and attack say, him? That's the worst. The, that's the worst. One worst thing that came out of this whole COVID. You know, I spend a, ton, a lot of time with my family, a lot of time with my friends. You may get to do a lot of stuff. You get to learn new things. I mean, make, make use of your time. But all these people that are spending all their time on this Twitter and, and social media sites just trolling people, get a life, man. It's terrible. Get a, Bro, it's so bad. Dude, you spend so much time getting upset about what somebody else says when, by the way, 90% of the comments are actually not even bad comments. The ones you should be looking for are the real people who are lurking around that are like, that are quietly saying things to rally, to, to like rile people up. Antagonize people. That's it. 100%. So if you want to go at their next, bro, by the way, I'll support you. But if you're going to come at a guy that just says Dak Prescott sucks and you, and then all of a sudden I'm racist and yeah, I'm come supposed at me. to... Come on, bro. Dak Prescott sucks. Stop it, dude. Stop. No, he sucks. Really. But these, guys are, these guys are pathetic, bro. They're pathetic. It's like you're a loser. You're sitting there like COVID... It, it enabled so many people to be so tough. I'm telling you. Bro, they go out. They have masks on. They're so tough because nobody could see them. They're all so badass, dude. All of them. Bro, there's nothing about you that's real. There's nothing about you that tells me you have any morals, convictions, values. Nothing. There's nothing about, about you, about what you're saying that tells me that you're a halfway decent human being. And because there's a pandemic and you can hide behind your keyboard and you could hide behind your cute little mask, that all of a sudden you just kill people for no reason. And you're waiting, you're waiting for someone like me to say something outlandish so you could screenshot it, put it on social media and say, here's another racist. 
Make yourself and, famous by standing on top of somebody else. And ruin that person's life forever. Because I'll tell you what, dude. If I really wanted to, if I wanted to, because I just left the page completely because I said, I don't have time for this. You're better off. Yeah, I just, I just left it. You know what I mean? Whatever. I'm done with it. If I really wanted to, I would have gotten that person's name. I would have screenshotted the conversation. And I would have put this on my social media and said, look at this dumb little troll. This little cupcake, teddy bear hugging troll. You soft, goat. You soft. Soft. It's crazy. I am like, I am like so over it. It is so, it's, I got a message here on top of the screen. The Wizard of Oz from behind says he has a message from he has a message from the Snowflake leader. Oh, I can't man. wait to see this. this I don't even know hysterical. what this means. If the, there's a caller here that this is what, cryptic. What, what what's going on here, dude? Come on, man! 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 I mean, this is this is. <laughs> come on, man! Come on, man! I mean, this is, dude. I, you know what? I'm like, honestly. Bro, but here's the thing. Perfect timing. Here's the thing for me. I, I'm. You've gotten to know me, right? And you're here now. You're you're a good dude. I've gotten to know a, a lot of a lot of stuff about your family background. Obviously, uh, down to your immediate family, your son, your wife, everything. Genuinely, a good guy. And thank you, brother. for me, likewise. Thank you. The fact is, for me, is. Do you know how difficult it is to invest one more minute into sports when things like this happen? And, you know, people, like, people get carried away with all the other stuff. For me, I'm, for me, it's I... It's got to be exhausting. I say a term like this, I make it black, or, black and white, not color. I'm talking facts and... Fa right, okay. right, right, so, right, right, right. No so, gray area. No gray area. So, for me, I make it very simple. Love sports. Love the guys and girls who go out there, do their thing, train very hard. I leave it as just sports. There's nothing that an athlete does that makes them more important to me than people who serve our country, than people who serve us on a daily basis, cops, EMTs, EMS, firefighters, all the above, right? I, like I, my priorities right. are straight. Okay. 100%. Uh, nurses, doc, all of them. The fact is, is... When people make comments and they start to turn people off, they realize what COVID did for me was I realized how much I could actually go without sports. And that's why when someone makes a comment and comes at me like that, or Deshaun Jackson says something, he makes a comment, I, it, actually, it actually confirms in my mind, wow, I don't need this, bro. And that's why... The enjoyment, a, a lifelong dream. Dude, when I was young, like Stuart Scott was, yo, <laughs> right? Yeah. Stuart Scott was the man. Absolutely. Booyah! Like Stuart, like, like, bro, the late, great Stuart Scott, rest in peace. R.I.P. Like, for me, I'd watch him and say, one day I'm going to do a show with Stuart Scott. That'd be awesome. Right? That like, that's, that's what I thought when I was younger. And... To be here at Hamilton Radio, have the opportunity and have a sports talk show and to, and, and to feel, to say to myself, like, I'm sitting in front of a mic, I'm reaching people, it's, it really is a dream come true. And I started to, when, when sports wasn't really here, and then you hear like the Deshaun Jackson comments, Steven Jackson, things like that, what happens is is you start to you start to wonder why that was your dream. And then I start to say to myself, maybe my dream was really skewed, bro. Maybe I don't know who these people are and they're actually not good people. And why would I support you can't second guess yourself though. It 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 makes me want to. I know, but you can't change what you want to do because of what other people's thoughts are. But how can I That's why we got this mayhem going on right now, man. Of course. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Yo, it's very difficult when, when people push your buttons. Bro, it's tough. It, it, and that's what we, we were saying outside. 
You know, people want you to people want others to choose a side when it's unnecessary. And the fact of the matter is, is, you know, you're wearing clothes like me, right? You wear your sports hats, you do your thing, you got the go you got the beard like me, you bleed red, got a little bit nicer of a tan, but I'm not gonna hold it against you. Hey, this is genetics, bro. I know, but it's you know, I, I, I can argue a little bit, but but the fact of the matter is is like Dude, you're just a you're a human being, bro. You're not better or lesser than me. You're just 100%. another human. Yo, know, people want others to get it twisted, so they come at your neck trying to get you to get to do something, and that's why people are so, so hurt about what's going on in sports because it confuses them. Dude, regular people that can't digest something and understand they just what's going see on, something. they just want to grab something that makes them feel normal. Bro, they're very confused about what's going on. They they see a game and they're like. Yo, I don't understand, dude. I, I I love this guy. Am I supposed to believe this? Do I believe the news? Do I believe this? What's going on in life? Bro, all of this is very confusing to people. So for me, I'm the type of guy that goes all in on something. Two and a half years ago, I started a business. Bro, just to have a kid. Okay. And the business was in the sports industry. Walk a mile in his shoes, folks. And literally, dude, I worked so hard, it almost ended my marriage. 16 hours like. a day. I know what that's like. Because we're, cause we're people. This is real life people stuff, okay? And I did it in a sports industry because I loved it, bro. I loved it and I thought that these people worked their way from nothing. Had st Josh Jacobs sleeping in the car. Yo, like, bro. And then certain things happen. We sacrifice just like the sports guys sacrifice before they make it. And then, and then things happen and people say things. Bro, the here, here, here it is in a nutshell. Hell, 80% of the income of watched games at arenas are white people who watch 80% of African-American-filled teams. Nobody hates you. Bro, I love these guys by default because they give me a reason to be happy. So the fact that... Without them, we wouldn't be on the show right now, just so you know. That's it. Touché. So the fact of the matter is, is for someone to call me racist is beyond a joke. And I'm gonna, I'll take it one step further, bro. They that admit. dude's a racist. It's all right. It's very possible. That dude is. Maybe he was just testing, you, testing the waters to see if, how you would react to so that you could. <laughs> so, that, I love it. That that's dude is. Timing. And that's how I... I, I He's I probably testing the waters. See if you would come out too. So that this way he can grab you. and You guys yo, can do, both do another post. I'll tell you, bro. I, it's, it's so... Yo, it gets me so... Cr I'm telling you, today, I was... You don't get it, dude. I was ready to just walk away. Like, I have not posted anything on my business's page in weeks, bro. My life. You know that. Listen, man. So I, I, have, I, I know. I know that. Yo, know that, that Deshaun Jackson thing came out, and I was like, bro, I love my, bro, my business has given me my daughter. Everything, bro. It's given me everything. Okay? Like, not, not, not only my daughter. The network of people that I have around me, bro, it's given me everything. Yo, last night I got a message from a, a, an MSR member. Breathe. Remember to breathe. All right, we got to give him a minute, folks. This is something deep. Drink some water. Listen. We all got to do better. Everybody from every facet of life. We all got to do better. If we all do our part, each one teach one, we can be better people, a better America. Everything we dreamed about when we were little. Everything our parents sacrificed for, worked hard for. People left their countries, came here so they can build something, something better. I can do bad all by myself without the nonsense.
You bring it back, Johnny? Dude, bro. My wife's putting the baby to bed. I get a message. Dude, I'm 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 I read the message and I'm emotional. Being away from the business has killed me. Killed me. Bro, I I I I miss my guys. How am I supposed to believe in any of that, dude? How? I don't understand how I'm supposed to believe in any of it. And for me, bro, it's impossible for somebody like me to do something unless my heart's in it. Bro, I got this message. I was in tears. Straight up. Dude, I was sitting down on a chair in my office. Dude, a mess. And, you know, the member was like, bro, you know, you don't know what you have until you don't have it anymore. And that's how I feel. And I miss, you know, I miss you. And, and, and like the excitement you brought every night into the household. Bro, it's huge. Me and Henry Solano would leave work early. Shout out Henry Solano. Put me out to MSR. It's big, man. Bro, oh, and, and like this, this, bro. I got to tell you one thing about our group. We, we have, we have a better connection with all of us. I mean, I've had some of those guys from there do, do business with me, uh, work on my house. I've met so many great people through MSR. And you know, I mean, even I'm thankful for this. I mean, even this opportunity you're giving me here to come on the show and hang out with you just to have a little fun. What are we doing? No, I an just, amazing guy, John. I just started. It's like, bro, I started it to hopefully supplement some bills. Yo, like real talk, I thought I was going to make 300 bucks a month. Maybe it would afford to pay for my car, right? And be able to have it. My daughter, because my wife and I had to use IVF, we weren't blessed enough to have it regular. Whatever. I'm still blessed. Turn into a community. And I was like, yo, I can make a difference. 100%. And I'm buying hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of, of people's product that don't even give a shit about anybody. I think you can't take the, the words from one or two guys and assume that that blankets how everybody else feels. Because I'm sure just like some people feel a certain way about one fact, uh, faction, I mean, there's going to be people in there that still agree with some of the parts of the other faction. Like, listen, I'm, I'm Catholic, Roman Catholic, grew up Catholic school, right? But my brother's Muslim. My brother's converted Muslim. And there's a lot of things that he teaches me about the Quran that I learned that I didn't learn in the Bible that I agree with some of those points. Some of the some of them I highly disagree with, but I think that's what everybody has. And that's and I think that's what this country is based on. Right. The melting pot. Everybody's got a different idea. Everybody's got a right to have their different idea. We just can't be hurting each other over it. That's all it is. I don't know, man. I'll tell you, bro, it's it's yo, it's. Speak up, bro. It's bad. Dude, it's bad. It's bad, bro. It's it's like, you know, people don't get it, man. <laughs> Yo, they they think people think they're the only ones who like who who struggle. People think they're the only ones who are who are, are out there and get to say their opinion. Yo, like you have a pedestal, bro. You're in front of millions of people. The way you the way you say things, the way you articulate yourself, the way you express yourself resonates with millions of people. And what you have to say is more hurtful shit. Bro, I'm out on that. Dude, like, if I had the platform these guys had, yo, it, it, dude, I would make a difference in one day. Like, I'm telling you, the craziest part to me is the fact that, like, and everybody else, especially the industry that I'm in, right? Everyone starts their own room. Five million fucking rooms, right? Hundred percent. Every yeah. everyone's we everyone had that, wants, we had that talk. <laughs> uh, everyone wants money. Everyone wants five. Everyone everyone wants money, right? Nobody cares. They'll drain everyone bone dry. I'm the only one that backs away at the peak of my business because I can't believe in something, right? And everyone else, it just there's just sheep. They'll just walk right off a cliff. They'll follow somebody right off a cliff. 
just morons. And for me, the toughest part about it is like trying to differentiate who's real and who's not. And I don't know if it's as I've gotten older or my daughter or the hardships that I went through, whatever it may be, it has made it to the point where I actually can't just make money off somebody. I have to believe in it. Bro, I can't actually run my business successfully unless I love it. I literally cannot get on the camera and get excited like I used to when I when I would open a box or say something because I was like, oh my God, dude, I can't believe this, this person. I open a box and I'm like, click, you could, I don't care. I can't do that, bro. I can't do it. My heart literally will not let me do it. Bro, it, yo, I can't, bro. I don't know what it is, but like, I don't know how anybody else does it. But when I sit in these rooms and I read these people's comments and I see other things or I see an athlete say something, yo, it, dude, it is so much deeper. I don't care what you stand, kneel for, in the locker room for, lay down, put your thumb in your ass. I really don't care. I don't, because you want to know why, bro? The blessing about this beautiful country is you actually can believe what you want. So that's cool. What I care about is when you have an opportunity to say something to make a difference, and you say some ignorant... You say some negative ignorant stuff, yeah. Bro, that is what burnt... That's what what eats my heart up. I can't do it. So, dude, I I just... Bro, so I sit there and I, I read this comment from an MSR member and bro, I'm actually in tears in my office. Yo, like my heart hurts, hurts. I will, I like, and I just simply wrote, bro, like, I appreciate you. I love you, man. Like you are, you know, you and so many others are, are family to, my wife and I and, and to the baby and you mean the world. There's a lot of things going on right now, you know, from number one, burning the candle from both ends, working 14 hour days for two and a half years. Like, bro, my body was breaking down. I was not healthy. I wasn't eating like, bro, I lost a lot of weight. I wasn't healthy all the way to, you know, the, the, what the athletes were saying And the protests and all that kind of stuff. Like, bro, for me, it was a recipe for disaster. And I just simply told them all that and said, bro, like, I'll be back when my heart is in it. I love you and I really appreciate you reaching out to me. And that was one of a few people who have reached out to me. And I feel thankful that I I definitely impacted people in a positive way. But, like, I cannot do it. Bro, I, I just, I'm like, all I want to do on Sunday, is it too much? Is, you know, it's like, is it too much to ask to just watch sports and be able to criticize my Cowboys without being called a racist? Like, I just actually want to be on. That's why everybody wanted sports back on anyway, so we could all find something in common. That's it. I, though, I want to get into arguments with people about how much the Cowboys suck. Yeah, if you're going to argue me about my team, how bad my team sucks, let's argue about sports and stats. I don't want to talk about who's, who's black, white, Chinese, yellow, purple, because I don't care. That doesn't I, matter. They're all people to me. I don't want to sit down in my office, have somebody write a message to me, and to be in tears because I walked away from my business three weeks ago with no rhyme or reason except for the fact that I'm disgusted, disheartened, and my heart is shattered and I'm not healthy. Like, bro, I'm, I'm like, it, bro, it breaks. I'm sorry. I will be the first to tell you whatever people think or wherever you are. I am the best in the business. And I walked away from it because of all this. And I miss my, I miss my guys. I miss my business. I miss being able to do what I love. We miss your back, brother. It just Yo, I I can't, dude. I it's it's yo, it's tough, man. What's up, Glenny? Andy Williams. What's up, guys? What's up, my peoples? Whatever, bro. Listen, man. The Mets have new ownership. 
That's good. Uh, Cohen, the Mets since 2011 uh, haven't been in the top 10 in payroll for nine, 10 years. And, uh, and uh, you know. Listen, I don't know, man. You Cohen? Talk, I'll be, uh, dude, I'll be back. All right, he's going to take a break. Now, listen, Cohen. Cohen's taking over the Mets. Everybody knows. But what are we doing? Everybody who, who hoped that uh, J-Lo and Alex Rod and that faction was going to buy the Mets organization, I mean, what were they going to do different? I think Cohen's got a better spot. Cohen's got better uh, people around him. And I think he's been looking to buy the Mets for a long time. He's finally got his shot. Give the guy a shot. Let's see what he does first. I don't know. I don't know if you're going to move bats, if he's going to move a pitcher. I hope he keeps the ace. But, I mean, there's not going to be uh, – I don't think there's going to be too much movement. I still think we're – we've got one of the best – I had this argument last week. We had the we had the best the, – pretty much the number one lineup in the league. I mean, anybody prove, prove me wrong if we don't have the best lineup. But we can't keep the consistency. I mean, is the pitching that much harder in our division? What are we doing, guys? Who we got on here? Let me see. Uh, let me see if we can get some love from uh, from Glenny Freeman or uh, Andy Williams and Terry Muller. What's going on, Joe LaRocca? How you doing, brother? Now, aside from aside from the Mets having the best lineup, I mean they can't keep it consistent. They can't hit anything. You know I mean, uh, first you hit 17, 17 runs in one game. You got an ace pitching. Diaz closes the game. Everybody's good, but they can't keep it together. And this is gonna. This is this has been the Mets' problem all along. Organization's good. They got stars. They got players. They got hitters. They got aces. But not everybody can do the same job at the same time. What are we doing? Yankees surging back. Again, starts from the head down. I think it's the based on the organization. When you're looking at the Yankees organization, you're looking at they, they've always made b bigger, better greater moves than the Mets. Mets always try to keep it conservative, not willing to pay anybody. Look what happened. They didn't want to pay uh, after we went to the World Series. They went. They didn't want to pay Daniel Murphy. We still had a good season after that. Washington didn't make it, but still. A lot of our good players get, uh, get taken by uh, other regions, and especially it sucks when they, come, when, when they go to different teams that are in the same division because then we're just hurting ourselves. So from the organization, from the head down, hopefully Cohen can change, make, thing, make things change. And hopefully the Yankees make the, uh, make the playoffs. Hopefully they get Glaber Torres back. You know what I mean? When he comes back, maybe they got another bat. Sanchez got to get his stuff together. I mean, the kid, kid's lost like a deer in headlights. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, Andy Williams, the Yankees, I'm not sold on. Let me tell you, if they, if they get their, their full lineup back, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with. I mean, if everybody can get those bats, I mean, God forbid Gary Sanchez starts getting his bat back. Forget about it. <laughs> you can beat up on Buffalo and Baltimore all you want, but the playoffs, no way. Eh, we'll see. And Terry Muller, who are we talking about? Who sucks? Yeah. Well, listen, they got to make some changes. Yankees need better pitching, I think, right? Bullpen's fair, but you need better aces. The bats got to get consistent. I think if they if they keep the bats, they get uh, Glaber Torres back. Uh, LeMahieu is a beast. You get these guys lined up all together. There's no, I don't think anybody wants to see them in the playoffs. Not a one team, all right? Only team I think's got a chance probably the Rays, and only because I mean with with their lineup of players, they they play a lot of small ball. They can beat you even without the big the big home runs. So, I mean that's that's a huge difference. San Diego versus the White Sox would be a great World Series. Andy, you got to call in and explain to me why. I think the Padres, exciting team to watch. I mean they hit what last week they had the they had the one game with like 30, 30 runs, twenty nine runs. You're looking at you got twenty a team with twenty nine runs again, just like the Mets. They got to be able to keep it consistent. You can't go 29 runs and then not score three runs the next game. You know what I'm saying? My man Johnny's back. My man Johnny's back. I was holding it down as best as possible. Look what Glennie says. Glennie says that uh, that San Diego versus the White Sox would be a great World Series. 
It would be. I don't think so. You all right? You back? Yeah, I'm back for a few minutes. All right. A couple minutes, brother. A couple minutes. So listen, we were talking about, I was talking about Cohen. All right. What move do you think he's going to make first? I think he's going to move some of the older bats, try to get some youth on the on the team, some young legs outside, right? And we got and he's going to develop the the bullpen. I mean, the bullpen is key. The bullpen blows. Um, That's what it is. We got a great starters. I mean, listen, our our uh, our bats in the late innings uh, don't you know don't get runs. Um, it's every game. They're not consistent. Dude, it's a bad franchise right now. I mean, it's you know, listen with the with great the fish stinks from the head down. It does. Uh, you know, f- ownership. Uh, great teams are led by by great owners um, that infuse their their love and passion without getting in the way. Um, you know, listen, the Patriots from Kraft down are great. Uh, that's you know the Yankees, from the Steinbrenners to Cashman, absolutely are great. Um, you know there is there is many many of franchises that you look at that are perennial winners, and and you know why, right? The franchises even even with the the Rooney family in Pittsburgh down to Tomlin, right? Um, you know you look at. Uh, you you look at some of this. I mean, listen. Like I said, since 2011, uh, the Mets haven't been in the top ten in salary in in baseball. Um, Cohen will change that. He will he will spend. So that's a that's a plus. I just hope he spends smarter. You know what? If your team doesn't spend, do you care if it's smarter or just spending? Because what happens is is as when teams spend. Like, the Yankees don't always get it right. They spend oodles of money but don't always get it right. But because, they, because, they're, willing, the farm. because they're willing to spend, the farm, yeah. every now and then they hit it, right? Yeah. So, you, so, so if, you know, 15, 10, 15 years back, whenever it was when they got CC, if you remember, that one summer they spent, or winter, whenever it was winter, they spent $600 million. It's full. And they got Sabathia. They got all these guys. They won one World Series. It's worth it. Mm-hmm. And a few of them didn't hit. Listen, they missed. So by the way, Mets. I'll I'll take one. I'll take any one after eighty six. I'll take any one, one in my lifetime. I appreciate it. Yeah. So that's so <laughs> so the the thing about it is 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 you know you're you're as as a as a Mets fan, you're like okay if he spends on the CCs. The Pavanos, the Ellsberries, and the A Rods, uh, and you hit two out of four because Pavano was a bust and Ellsbury was a bust, but CC and A Rod were great. You hit on two out of four and you spent. As a fan, you're like, I'm in on that, right? It's great. So I don't. So I, I just want the guy to spend. I don't necessarily care what he spends it on. Just for, take for the him. shot. For him, take the shot. You got to take the shot. You miss a, You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Yes, Bro- gotcha. Brody Van Wagenen's got to be out. You have to get a general manager in that that is, first of all, that has his finger on the pulse. Second, that is going to bring in very good leadership and development. You have to build your farm system. You have to. You have to literally. Um, you got money, have, money ball it? You have to money... Well, no, I mean, <laughs> you just... You you know, you, you have to work... You have to work the numbers, essentially. That's the way baseball is now. But it just... There are pieces. You have to have a top-end ace, right? We have yep. it. You have to have... Uh, you have to get guys on base and be able to produce in high-stake moments. And you have to be able to close, okay? Clutch. Right now, from the seventh inning on, not only the Mets bad... They're atrocious. There's nobody in the clutch. They can't hit. They can't close. So for me, if if I'm if I'm going to do it, trade whoever you want. I don't care if you want to rebuild it again. Whatever you feel you have to do, I don't mind another rebuilding. You want to know why? 
Because I'd rather a full rebuild than be stuck in purgatory, which we are now. So if I know a new owner comes in and says, dude, I am burning this down to the ground. We're going to completely build a new foundation. I'll say, you know what? I actually rather the new owner do that than come in and say, well, we'll keep one piece. We'll trade a couple and then we'll be mediocre. We won't get such great draft picks. It, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. And not many teams can retool that, that way. And it takes a long time to do that. A long time. And, and, and you, need, you need a specific set of players to be able to retool and you mean do the, all those tweaking things. In football, you can kind of squeeze one person in and you got so many other people on the roster. Baseball is not the same. You got a limited roster, you got a limited amount of people playing. You got I mean, if you got one, it's hard to, hard enough to find a good second baseman, but then you got to find the guy with the range on the left side for the left-handed batters. It makes it difficult. Those little tweaky things, you, you either got a player that's got the tools or you got a player that doesn't. You either got a three-tool player or you got a five-tool player, one or the other. So, and by the way, dude, it, it, the craziest thing is, is great management and great baseball minds will actually lead to success no matter what, a la the Tampa Bay Rays. I was just about to say. So the fact is, is when you have great player development and great leadership, they lost Joe Madden who was like the, you know, the wizard, right? Right. Uh, the baseball guru. He was supposed to be the king of small market teams. El jefe. Yeah, he leaves. The boss leaves. And the team continues to get better. And the fact of the matter is, is you're talking about a team in first place with, an, with another powerhouse in the Yankees who... Added Garrett Cole. And this is why for me... That was a great addition, by the way. It was a great addition. But this is why for me, it just goes to show you how bad Mets ownership is. Dude... They stink. You can't tell me you're in New York and you can't field a competitive team when the Tampa Bay Rays are dog duke. And they're great. I don't understand. Tampa Bay Rays, bro... They made a living. Bro. They made a living playing at, small ball. at a playing in empty stadiums, bro. You can't. They're used to it. Uh, uh, but I, I don't. They don't even have a home field advantage, bro. For so God's sake! Shot this year, man. The the ball goes up and hits rafters in their own stadium. That's how bad it is. And the team is good. I don't get it, dude. The Mets are the only ones who can't figure it out. And by the way, I'll even push it a step forward. That's why the Cowboys can't figure it out. Because if Jerry Jones does not take his head out of his own ass, this is exactly why the Cowboys can't figure it out. Because every single time something happens, the first person who says something is Jerry Jones. Jerry, do yourself a favor. Bro, shut up. Exhibit A. Oh, my God, dude. And this is why it's like I can't take another minute of that guy either. You know, it's like... It, it, it's bro, it's bad. I mean, listen, you know all about bad ownership with the Johnsons. Oh, thank you. Welcome, um, welcome aboard. Yeah, it's just it's uh it's atrocious, you know. So I don't know. For me, I am um I am definitely uh you know I am definitely in the midst of trying to figure out if the Cowboys are worth watching anymore. Listen, it's your team. You got to stick with them. That's one. That's one thing I've always been. I've always been a ride or die. When I pick a team, that's my team, good or bad. Because then you can't be with them, and they say it all the time. You can't be with them in the bad times, then you can't be with them and celebrating the good times. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, but listen, for you, Jets fan, I want to ask you something. Okay, <sighs> so let's let pick them the pain. So here we go. The New York Jets lose in glorious fashion, uh, as the Jets always do. 100%. Right. So um, we do best. Le'Veon Bell is now hurt. Oh, three weeks gone. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye bye. Did Sam, you draft him? <laughs> Sam Darnold is uh, is still seeing ghosts. Yes. And he's got no. He's definitely not seeing live people. He's got no no. <laughs> he's got no help on the outside. He does have a nice left tackle though. The young yeah. buck is really. He's he strong. looks good. He's good. He yeah. looks clean. He looks clean. He got beat on a couple plays, but he picked himself up. You yeah. Know. Wiped well, himself down and I mean, got, got to block in the next couple plays. How bad right now is it for the New York Jets? Listen, I... The team... Bef the I team said, that's going to have a better I record said, than the Cowboys! 
Hey, listen, listen, we're tied right now. <laughs> we're tied right now. Yeah, now, check you it, check, know, after check it. You know, and you know I'm a homer. You know I'm a homer. That's and you know all my peoples out there, JC, if you're watching, you already know. J E T S. I'm gonna just end the sodomy. Duke, Duke, right, Duke. So, <laughs> dude, when you get out there and you start looking at this team, in the beginning of the season, with the addition of Frank Gore for extra legs just to just to just to watch, we picked up that kid Josh Adams, right? Just to feel he looked like the starter the other day. Josh Adams, who's that? Exactly. Exactly. Who's Josh Adams? Josh, I don't know. Is the kid used to play for the uh, used to play for the Eagles but last you were, year? You were exci- you were excited about anybody who played for the Eagles? No. So why were you excited about him? No, I, I wasn't excited. If but, you look at it, I'm saying at the, at the beginning of the season, yeah. you, ha- you had these couple people. We just signed them before the game just to fill in. Oh, my right? God. That's what I'm saying. That's how terrible it is. It's, it's chaos going on. Yeah, but here. just last week, I said that to you when you were like, you were, you were, you were crazy. I said to you, no, I no, said, no, no, I no, said, no, 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 but or very similar, at least. No, they were not so, better. Yes, yeah, well, they were similar. They were similar. I think was, he had he had one more interception and only one, thing. Only thing that was fumble. only thing that was similar was they played in the same position. Come okay. on, my guy. Listen, bro. Come on. You ask you ask me a question. You attack my fanhood. All right. So yeah. I'm being real, being real, being breaking down the sports. Right. So, <laughs> listen. We got one good offensive lineman. We have to build. There's everybody knew before the season. Realistic Jets fans, not me being crazy last week. <laughs> We were going to build. It's going to take us at least another two more years. Everybody's, everybody knows it. If we don't need another quarterback by then, we're already going to need. We're all going to re- already going to need a whole set of receivers by next season. Bring back everybody's Sanchez. hurt. The Sanchez. <laughs> Listen, I like Sanchez. He was a game manager, but he was my favorite game manager because you know what? He kept it exciting. He played, and I even got a couple laughs in a couple games. Right? All right. Hot dogs, butt fumbles. Everybody got their laugh in. But we went to the AFC Championship <laughs> twice. And that's all I cared about. That's all you cared about. The W. By the way, here we are. But two, then we didn't even show up the, in that in the, both those games. We didn't show up either second half. Here we are, 2020, talking about uh, how your team has actually no players on it. And I, I tried to say this. I wasn't trying to come at your right. – I was just trying no, to be you were honest. you my fanhood. Bro, but it's not, it's not a test of your fanhood. It's a test of your football intellect. Bro, how can you think this team is a winning team when they actually just lost people? They didn't even add anybody. They lost everybody. They lost Mosley. Everybody's gone. They lost Mosley, Adams, Robbie Anderson, and then you said, <laughs> we're going to be better. <laughs> like, bro. No, no, no. Better than the Cowboys. <laughs> you guys have a bunch of stars and you still don't go to the playoffs. Okay, but we added people, so how could they be better? Whether or not we suck is a different story. <laughs> but I also tell you we suck. Here's the thing. Dude, I'm realistic. I tell you. We're not going to win a Super Bowl while we have Trash Scott as our as our quarterback. Okay, now I got to correct you. Last week you said the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl with Andy Dalton. Uh, not with Andy Dalton either. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that sentence stops at Cowboys are going to win. Not Andy Dalton. Stop. <laughs> Andy Dalton, the Red Rocket. Not even for close. president. Not even close. What do you mean? Not even close, bro. Dude, I bet. I, I I told you I agree with you. I bet you he's starting by middle of the season. Dak throws a couple in toes one game, and then coach got to you know, Listen, reprimand him. They put him in, put him me, in the bench. Here we go. Call in, call in the Red Rocket. Red Rocket wins the game after they were losing, and then he starts the next game. That's oh, how it's going to be. I, I bet you game five. I'm just saying this to you. The, be, the, the Cowboys, this is what's going to happen, right? Prescott's going to get hurt. Dalton's going to come in and lead us to the promised land. And... And by the way, so Terry Muller is a Cowboys fan, right? And so Terry Muller, good guy. Terry Muller is Terry Muller's the type of dude, he's like you. He drinks the Kool-Aid heavy, bro. <laughs> heavy, right? Like, he actually drinks out of the jar with the star on it, okay? Like, the Kool-Aid is, is deep. All right. He gets it's the 1987 a, nah, nah. Wheaties with the star uh, with the Cowboys. Still, still got Emmett Smith on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he actually he's got the, he put he pours the powder into the jug and and just and and actually he 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 he's fall- the guy that makes his pancakes and then cuts the star out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He, you know he actually hangs upside down and funnels it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I he, know a guy so like it, that. Yeah, so it gets to the system quicker. So so here we go. So the crazy thing is, I have to call him last year. I call him up. 
We're playing the Packers right before the Packers game, dude. I swear on my life, okay? I say, Terry, why are you watching this game? Dak Prescott's going to throw the ball behind his receivers, a couple interceptions. We're going to lose the game. Then at the end, he's going to come back the whole nine yards. Bro, as right as the rain, throws it behind the receiver for an interception. First thing I did was call Terry Muller, and he's like cursing at me. He's like, throw that for thought, throw it for thought. Yeah, I'm like, he's bro. One of those guys, I wore my left sock upside down, yeah, inside yeah, yeah. out. Yeah, so, so, so I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'm all I'm doing is, is just trying to help you not set yourself up for failure. That's all. Just watch the game and say to yourself, I'm going to watch it as a fan, not as a homer, so my heart isn't destroyed 10 minutes into yeah, the game. You, you got to, okay. You gotta... So I say to him, bro. You got to manage those expectations. Before I was called a racist, the stat that I gave <laughs> was Dak Prescott, four games last year, in four games, threw no touchdowns, okay, in four. The last three games had an opportunity to win the division, and one of them put up a goose egg against the Eagles, who had their fifth, sixth, and seventh String wide receiver and cornerbacks didn't throw a touchdown. Okay. Not only that, led the league in bad pass attempts, which is a crazy stat that they keep up. Okay. Terrible. So the fact is, is all I'm doing, I- I'm actually not even telling you anything that you can't Google yourself. Okay. <laughs> I'm not telling you something that's so outrageous. You're like, you're making it up. Dude, Google it, okay? Like, look at, go down the, go to every game. Fact see check them. Fact check them. That's all. You want to fact check me? Fact check me. You want to decide if I'm CNN or Fox? You do it. <laughs> all I'm telling you is, is I'm reading you things that were there. That's all I'm doing. Just watch the game. But watch the game as a fan. I tell Terry, yo, bro, I love you, dude, okay? You're my guy. Let me ask you, did he let you say hello, or did he just go right on, right in on you? No, Terry, go, he, as soon as I pick up the phone, he's like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, like, he goes right in on me. He's like, you know, as soon as I, and, and he thinks I'm some sort of, like, absolute hater. No, dude, I, like, not, the Cowboys. He thinks you're the anti-fan? Yeah, like, I'm the, I'm the anti-Christ of you're, Dallas. You're the guy in the, uh, what you call it? <laughs> Yeah, movie in the back of the field. Yeah. Oh, we're going to lose. We're going to lose. It's okay. He's going to throw an interception, and we're going to lose. doesn't matter if we're winning. Yeah. Like, it doesn't <laughs> matter, right? Like, I'm crying no matter what. I'm pessimistic right when I wake up in the morning. You cry a lot, though. So, yeah. I mean, but I'm just saying, like, there's reasons, okay? There's reasons. <laughs> so, here's the thing. I tell him just so he's not distraught at the end of the day, but he doesn't want to listen. And then what happens? Then he goes on Facebook and says something like, <laughs> Same old cowboys. Blah, blah, blah. Dee, dee, dee. Dee, dee, dee. No, it's not the same old cowboys. Dude, Dak Prescott sucks. It's not the same old cowboys. It's not. By the way, Jason Garrett's not there. Same result. Dallas sucks. Bro, same result. Dallas sucks. They we, both, we both have, I bet we both have a new quarterback by, by 2022. We need him. We need him. The fact is this, bro, Gallup. C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, Zeke Elliott, Swartz, great offensive line. You can't get three yards. You get hands everywhere. Come on, bro. You can't get three yards. And then a guy like Terry is going to be, is going to apologize for Dak and say the coaching sucks. Yo, the statistics are proven. Going forward on fourth down is statistically the right move to do. What do we, I have a caller? Is that what that dumb noise is? I have a caller on the line? (laughs) Do I have some? Do I have somebody on the line? I don't know. I'm just gonna keep talking because I don't know what that was. You heard that? I heard it. It was was. elevator music. I I didn't know what happened there. We had elevator music for a second, but all I'm saying is, was that the deal or no deal song? I don't know, but there's no deal if you're asking me about (laughs) Dak. No deal. No deal. Wait a second. Hold on. Uh oh. I have the cryptic messages back on the screen. Oh, uh, my God. All right. Go ahead. I do have a call. The, el- the We got a caller. Go ahead. Here he is. I can't wait to hear this. Go ahead. Oh no. Dak no, Prescott's no. business like managers on the phone, Terry Muller. <laughs> I mean, it did not answer. 
Terry? Oh, Terry Muller, Dak Prescott's oh, business, a a, business manager, is on the line with us. It is great <laughs> to hear from you. <laughs> How are you and your client doing? Terry? Are, hey, what? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh, we, he, he's back. So listen, his Terry's phone connection is as good as Dak Prescott's arm. So here we go. <laughs> Terry, let me ask you a question. When you watch this team on Sunday, which I didn't, not for one split second, okay? Because I actually knew what was going to happen. When you watch this game and you were all excited, you said, man, McCarthy's here and we got C.D. Lamb. When you strapped your ass oh, into the couch. Time out, time out, time out, time out. Can't wait. I'm oh, he just ran out of timeouts, right I think. Here. You, what? you were happy McCarthy was here. You were happy Jason Garrett was out and McCarthy was in. Were you not, sir? Yeah, I was, wasn't. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Bro, okay. but but All who right. is so, still no, 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 who no, is still quarterback? Play that, who okay? is still quarterback? Am I a bigger Dak Prescott fan than you? Absolutely. Can I see the guy for his fault? Yes. Do I think he's worth forty million? No. no. Do I think he's probably going to get it? Probably because it's worth it's the next guy up instead of the best guy. Okay. This this now is now we've it. established that fact. Next. Okay, next. You ready for it? Will the Cowboys ever win a Super Bowl with Dak Prescott? Listen. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here. Listen. No, 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 no. Listen, listen I don't get an answer. Listen, I don't get an answer. There, there's there's well, got to be an elaborate answer for this. For he's he's, he's going to give you the backhanded excuse. There's, there's what? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I was too busy ignoring the not yes or no answer I was getting. What were you guys to say? Honest answer? I don't think I don't think they can. I don't. So Terry, unless, why unless are Dak you? Steps it up. I mean, everybody says he's a top five guy. I don't think he's a top five. So guy. why do you back down? So, so what? So why are you supporting him then? Are you just being the the, te- the team guy? You're just rooting for him for to be the team guy. Well, no, I'm going to my quarterback. I want him to do well. I he, definitely don't. Andy Dalton's our option. He's my quarterback. I think that's better than Andy Dalton. Otherwise, Andy Dalton is starting somewhere else, you know? Listen, the reason why Andy Dalton's not starting in Cincy is because they used the first round pick on Joe Burrows, hoping to develop him with a brand new coach that wanted his own guy. Look at the stats. So the stats do not lie. What? Where else would he? Where else would he? Give me a team. Jets. Where, where else would you like him to go? I mean, there is the nowhere I mean, else. Terry found a home in in, in New England. For of God's sake. of course, Cam Newton's twenty nine years old. He was an MVP. Of they spent thirty eight dollars on Cam Newton to get take a shot on him. A former MVP at twenty nine years it's old. No brainer. Oh, it's a no brainer with Stidham right there. Where else would he start, bro? Got hurt, hurt early in the season. Got had time to recover. He's he's back. Two was in Miami. Okay, so he's next in line. He's not going to be there. You have every place that has young talent that people are trying out. You have Sam Darnold with the Jets, Daniel Jones, Dwayne Haskins, not working out Carson well, Wentz, Matt Stafford, Kirk Cousins. Where is he going to go? Kyler Murray, well, Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson. What, I, what, I, what I'm saying to you is you think Andy Dalton is a better option than Dak Prescott. He is based on his stats. He is. Four. He is. Bro, we've given based Dak. On what, based on what? His, uh, his reliability of getting Cincinnati somewhere? I mean, what's he done? Uh, he got he sin- 10 years in NFL. Bro, are you? Are you no, no, seriously. Are you? Four, four playoff appearances? Four playoff with, appearances with Cincinnati. With no running back. With no running back. No wide receivers like oh, the no, ones he's got. No, no offense. Line. AJ Green was no wide receiver. He was hurt half the time. Bro, are you kidding me? Dude, he was in a, he was in a division with the Ravens and the Steelers. Are you, uh, come on, Terry. It's for half of that the Ravens weren't good. This I mean, is come on, Joe Flacco landed a job in Denver last year. You're gonna tell me he can't if he's that good, he can't find a job? Bro. Let me let me ask you, John, where where do you rate where do you rate Dak Prescott in in comparison to Joe Flacco, I probably put him maybe twelfth or thirteenth. No, uh, Dak Pre- Dak Prescott is is fifteen on on, on the QB well, and, list. And, and, and listen, you got a lot of people saying he's a top five guy. I don't believe that. Okay, no. got you know, bro. I think he's top half of the league. The guys who I think, think the out. guys who think he's top five are guys who are pushing the agenda of QBs in this league that they're trying to get over, bro. Open your eyes. Lamar Jackson, you even, Patrick Mahomes. You even, you even, you're a top 10 quarterback, and nobody in the world hates the Cowboys 
next to you more than Stephen A. Smith. Of course he's saying it. Listen, but bro, <laughs> use your use your brain here, right, bro? You're a very intelligent guy, so here it is. Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, or Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, you would say are our top five, right? Without even blinking an eye. Of course. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue that. I'm not gonna argue any of those names. Okay. Would you put Matt Stafford? Okay. I, I didn't even get to, into Tom. Not I didn't, now. Not now. Are you gonna do the comparison? Not now. Bro, how in, not now? In his prime? No, it's not even. We don't even need him in his prime. I'm just yeah. saying. We don't even need him in his prime. We need him right now. What do you mean in his prime? Bro, look at these numbers. I, he was injured last year. It's the only reason why he wasn't on the field. Matt Stafford is a savage. But we're not even in his prime. Get rid of his prime. Right now, he's still. I'm going to go through the no, teams. I agree you. with you. I'm just saying, if Terry's not saying not now, so when? Because, te- all right. If, if this team's button opens up eventually before the show ends, <laughs> right, we can go through it. Ter, I'm going to go through quarterbacks. I'm going to go through quarterbacks in the NFL. I want, we'll go through teams, okay? A, a, good, a, a good drill here we're going to do together. I'm going to go through the teams, and I want you to tell me if you would have Dak Prescott over, over, uh, what's his name? Who am I thinking of right now? Rocket? Well, um, uh, Matt Stafford? No, just Dak Prescott over any of these QBs. Well, over the top right, fives? Dad. Over okay. any of the top fives? Any of them. No, any, not even any, top ten. Bro, it's any question. Any of the 15. You ready? Here we go. Ter. Teams. We're going to go down it right now. Okay. Um... Would you rather have him? Let's just we'll, we'll just go down. Would you rather have him over Jackson, Lamar Jackson? No. All right. No, that's a no. no just go through it. Let's just go through it. Okay. No. Would you want him over Ben Roethlisberger? No. I'm gonna say right now, no. Okay. No, never. Not now. Never. Okay. Ever. Ever. Um, you would you want him over uh, Deshaun Watson? Honestly, <laughs> Watson. I, I listen. I love Watson. When he's on the field, he's a playmaker. But he gets hurt. Bro. I want a guy who's not hurt. Zach's never been hurt. First, first of all, so, please. I need you. I so need... what's his excuse if he's never been hurt? I, yeah, he's on the field all the time, but can't win. <laughs> Hello. He's on the field all the time, but he can't win. So okay. So so Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes. No. Uh, would you rather have him over Aaron Rodgers? No. no. Would you rather have him no. over Drew Brees? No. Okay, would you rather have him over Tom Brady? No. Where Tom Brady sits right now in Tampa? Yeah. He won game in Tom Tampa, Brady two threw for two. Shot, t- dude. Watch, Tom Brady is going to prove himself to be getting old this year. Okay. Tom Brady, the GOAT, is done this year. All right. W- w- would you want him over I'll take Russell Tom Wilson? Brady over, over Dak Prescott. <laughs> over Russell Wilson? No. I want would, Russell Wilson. Would you rather have him over Kyler Murray? Kyler Murray's not proven to me, so I'm going to take Dak. Kyler Murray's done more already than Dak has, but no problem. Would you want him? Would you want him over Matt Ryan? I I want anybody over Matt Ryan. Oh I want God. you over Matt Ryan. Oh my Matt God. Ryan is wow. a choke artist in the are world. You, wow. Bro, are you serious? Matt no, Ryan's dude, a choke I artist. Matt Ryan in a fantasy draft. He was the last guy left. Matt not Ryan. So We're not so fantasy. So NFL. So. Fa- so Matt Ryan leads a team to yeah, the Super Bowl. Yeah, Matt Ryan. I want nothing to do with him. Matt. <laughs> See this, but this is this is what we're we're, we're talking about. Your 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 subjectivity. That? That? Quarterback number eleven. Yeah, quarterback number eleven. By the way, Josh Allen from the Bills, who looked great. <laughs> you would want you'd want Dak over Josh Allen. You got to gauge the competition. Yeah, though. he was playing. Yeah, I Jets. want Chet, I want Dak over Josh Allen. <laughs> God, you'd want him over Cam Newton. No, uh, now, yeah, I want him over Cam Newton. No way. Yeah. But see, this is what I'm not his prime. Cam Newton is prime. Uh, he's 29. He's 29. I he... want Cam. Now no. I want Dak. Dude, this is see. This is what I'm. This this is the thing, dude. I'll take Cam after a bus accident. Uh, this is the the, the, the thing of it <laughs> Cam is. Cam Newton last week didn't throw a pass that connected over 15 yards in the air. He's okay. Not capable of doing it anymore because his shoulder is screwed. Okay. Bro, that... so Cam Newton is living off his past. See so Cam, what he can do plus next year when he throws next, next week when he throws 400 yards, and that's what's gonna happen. So Cam Newton, so here, so here it is. So Cam Newton, right? 
the whole Patriots defense is out because of COVID, right? They decided they weren't right. playing. High Tower, Chung, all of them. Okay, Cam Newton didn't throw a deep ball. Still led the team to a victory. Dak Prescott's entire team is here. Can't <laughs> win the game. Thank you. I'll take Cam Newton, who doesn't pass the ball, who wins. Then Dak Prescott, uh, who has nobody. Wait, wait, wait. Dak Prescott, wait, wait. Stop, 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 stop. You're going to say the entire Dallas Cowboys team was there? Who was Boom. missing on our defense starting, you know, starting the first quarter? Oh, wait, you didn't watch any of it. So, uh, we you... Van Der Esch. Oh. We have no Sean Lee. So there's your two juggernauts on defense right there. Two of the three juggernauts, juggernauts on defense. Listen, Sean, say, Sean Lee's a beast. I'm not taking anything away from Sean Lee. Blake Jarwin in the second quarter. Sean Lee is nine, not nine, a juggernaut. Nine, Blake, Jar- nine, nine, and he's Blake Jarwin? Nine. Blake Jarwin? Yeah. Uh, are you talking about Blake Jarwin? C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, Michael nine, Gallup, Zeke. We're talking about Jake Blake Jarwin? Four guys in that game to seven week. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know who the Dallas Cowboys? front line is currently do you know i didn't watch the game but do you know what the dallas cowboys defensive line is currently i don't know if you know because you watch the game maybe you know less than i do about what the line looks like the line is demarcus lawrence don terry poe beast griffin beast and Alden Smith, who was doing nothing but training and still looks in his prime. Animal. Animal. Alden Smith looks good. Animal. Bro, the Alden four of... Looks better than most guys on the defensive line. Ter, I'm not that, gonna lie. that defensive line with the names. Top, is, th- top three in the league. Actually, historic. Top three in the league. <laughs> and you're telling me I care about old man Lee. And Le- and by the way, Leighton Vanish, who I love, 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 couldn't stay on the field last year. Clearly can't do it this year. So, by the way, Sean Lee played minimal time last year. Minimal. And it was only to cover Vander And it was only to cover Vander Still played minimal time. <laughs> Jalen Smith is really the guy who's the workhorse and all over the field. So, bro, come on, dude. Yeah, he's once, the guy you're building around. Once again, it's another Cowboys fan who cannot see 10 feet in front of his own eyes. Bro, stop apologizing for the guy's... For the guy who's supposed to lead the franchise, bro, you are <laughs> you are literally you are just following the blind, bro. Anybody knows this. The most important player on the field is the quarterback. If your QB cannot put up more than 17 points in a game, you're losing. With the amazing assets that he has, is not. The guy that can lead the team. He plays for America's team. We need, and I'm not even saying he's. And by, by the way, the the rookie QB on a football team with no name had an amazing day in comparison to Dak Prescott. Bro, well, but this is what happens, though. This is what happens. It's a matter. It's it's only facts. I'm not telling you anything that you can't see for yourself. You want to find a reason, bro. You want to. This is not a me issue. It's a you issue. You want to find well, a well, reason. Call, call it what you want. <laughs> you <laughs> want to find a reason to watch them. I'm, I'm getting yelled at by my wonderful wife to give her back her phone. So, <laughs> no, but your wife's phone, Terry. What are you doing? You listen to you boys. Right shout out to Tracy, by the yeah, way. Shout tra- out to Tracy. Tracy. What's going on? She, we Love know you, she's Tracy. <laughs> We know uh, she's the rock star in the family. Trace, by the way, you should have bo- you. By the way, <laughs> you should have called in, Trace. Secretly, I actually blame Tracy for letting him call in with this craziness. <laughs> You're to blame for this, Tracy Muller. This is a you. What was I this is a. Tell this, him no. Nah, you know what, Tracy? You know what you tell. We appreciate him? the support, Tracy. You say, listen, Trace. Like any, like any good wife would do, you have to protect your husband from himself. Okay. Absolutely. He no, looks. I he, just allow him to sound like an idiot sometimes, and it's okay. There it is in a nutshell, <laughs> Tracy. By the way, there it is in a nutshell. See, Tracy, that's, you and Steph would get along. Tracy, you are the real hero here. This is why. See, this is why she's the reason why the Mueller family goes the way it does. See, this is the engine inside the train. Hundred percent. Thank you, Tracy. Take your glue. phone back, Trace. Take your phone back because he's got to protect him from himself, please. Give me.
I have my phone back. I promise he will not call back again. Oh, gosh, man. <laughs> Please, Tracy, thank you. You have a splendid afternoon. Take care, Tracy. I will, and you gentlemen also. See you later. Guys and, girl, guys and girls, please understand something. I am a Cowboy fan, okay? I am learning to, to detach myself from the names on the back of the jersey. What I'm teaching myself every single week is to watch and learn and see what's what, okay? There's a reason why I can look at a guy like Prescott, not at what he looks like, guys and girls, but how he performs on the field. The first completed pass he made in the game to Zeke Elliott over the middle, he threw it behind Zeke Elliott. It was late. He held on to the ball too long. He, he does it all the time. He continuously does that time after time after time. We have the only... Black quarterback in the league that cannot understand that he's actually a superior athlete and can run the ball when he should. Why is it that Mahomes, Wilson, Jackson? He wants to be a pocket passer. Why? Why is it that all of these guys, Newton, are so dynamic? They look and they're like, "Yo, read make one, decision. quick decision making. Read one, read two, read three. Nothing. I'm read out. Three, nothing. Pew, I'm gone. out." So these oh. guys are these guys are superheroes because of that. Yet I get the only one in the league, in a new trending, uh, a new trendy fashion in the league, when all these guys are now leading these 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 offenses of the 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 run pass option, right? And they can't, and and he's the only one who can't do it. The RPO does not exist in Dallas. Let me ask you, John. Do you think he's more athletic than Josh Allen on the Buffalo Bills? No. You don't think he's more athletic than Josh Allen on the Buffalo Bills? Oh, do I think he's more, like, physically? Yeah, Physically more athletic. Dude, Dak's a monster. Look at him. Let me ask you. The Bills win games. Not just this last week, but the Bills, even at the end of the season last season, before they started to collapse the last two games. Dude, they run 40 to 50% of the time with their quarterback. Why don't... I mean, you got Zeke. I understand why you don't run. Bro. But if if it's open, if you can create the distraction... Why, Why are the Chiefs... Why are the Chiefs? Kids got to use his legs. Texans, Ravens run offense. So, bro, Seattle's run offense is productive with guys by the name of Carson. People, hear me out, okay? They're they're good because the quarterback is not afraid to run outside the pocket. When the opportunity arises, which then Keeps creates the linebackers honest. dynamic opportunities for the running backs. Absolutely. Put Be- them in a pickle. Because of Dak's inability to run in a timely manner. They can sit. They, can they the stack pass. the box. And Dak's arm is not dynamic enough to get the ball to his receivers where they need to be. For the receiver to be successful. Period. Do you not think that I want Dak Prescott to be successful? I want a franchise quarterback. I'm dying in the worst way. I want Dak to win 10 Super Bowls. For anybody who is telling me I just hate him, you're an idiot. You are literally a freaking moron. I want a franchise quarterback. You think I don't want a franchise QB? You think I want? Everybody wants one. Come, bro, come on. I wish the Jets would go on Oprah. When like Dak, a quarterback day. When Dak. And you get a quarterback and, and you, you get, get a quarterback. Everybody everyone gets, gets a quarterback. A, when you, when, 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 <laughs> when Dak first stepped in and took over because Romo, you know, had the injury, broke his back in the preseason, right? When Dak stepped in and the Cowboys were, were winning games and he was managing, he wasn't throwing interceptions, and he was doing his thing. I was like, bro, if this kid actually gets better, right? Like, He'd be formidable. I was, I was so excited. And, and another reason why I thought to myself, because I, I could see that NFL turning. I could see it changing. 
I could see it evolving into more of an athletic position where some of these young QBs who are predominantly black quarterbacks coming up, and we have one. I was like, let's go, baby. You know, I wish you had a good one. But I don't. But I don't. It happens. And and here I am now. Luck of the draw. Luck of the draw. And here I am now. I'm not talking about Dak Prescott, the humanitarian, because obviously he's an amazing guy. I'm talking about Dak Prescott's inability to make a freaking play on the football field. Let me ask you, who would you have picked? Not knowing what you know now, who that was left on the board when Dak was picked would you have taken? Well, Dak was picked in the third round. Right. So I'd have to go back and look at the draft. Um, you know what's crazy? <laughs> Russell Wilson was also picked in that round. Look what we got. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'd have to go back. I don't think he was left on the board, though. No, no, no. no not, he, he went, I'm he saying went, he, he went, went like that round three, in three his or draft. Four, yeah, he, draft. he went like three or four earlier. But, bro, I mean, listen, I'm just saying, <laughs> like, in that, in it's it's hard because in that draft, guys like Carson Wentz, Went high up, and is Carson Wentz uh, a, a guy who who has been on the field very long? No, but no. when he's on the field, he's dynamic. Carson Wentz last year, th- I think he, he's got great baseball now. Just I mean, great football knowledge. He's a smart player. He's a smart quarterback. Uh, I, just, I I don't think he's got the arm to consistently throw downfield and accuracy problems when you get past 20, 30 yards. It's terrible. That's it. It's terrible. I'm just saying, Dak Prescott to me. Is out, and as long as he's the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, they will never, ever, ever be better than mediocre. And it showed once again. So you're saying they're a 500 team? They're a 500 team. So they're not making the playoffs this year. The Cowboys. Uh, listen, after what I, I just said, because he called no. me, like, you called me. On the no, I mean, but but I mean, based on now look at you. based on the record, I think the Cowboys go nine and seven still, and I think the Jets. I told you, I think the Jets win three games. No. I, st- I still think we win more, and only on the on the guys that, under the guys that nobody thinks we can do it. Guys, come on, stop, dude. You're <laughs> embarrassing yourself. Stop it. It's embarrassing when you say things like that. It's embarrassing. The reason why is it because you sometimes. because what happens is I almost feel like Tracy Muller has to call back in and ha- like help you, like save you I'll from call, you. Also, call my my wife. Yeah, like have Stephanie. My wife call in. <laughs> Stephanie has to call any minute now and say, Daniel, Shout out stop." To Steph, who saved me in many a times. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's sad though, you know, because like good guys sound crazy, right? So this is what happens. You 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 talk about a team and your passion. Listen, we're takes falling over. apart. Honestly, I think I don't think that the Cowboys are going to be uh, even eight and eight, but I, I definitely don't think nah. the Jets are going to be there now either. Come on, bro! They're all both the injuries, like, all the people not playing, the the Sam Darnold seeing not seeing live people. Eric Sika just said from from Bro Fluent said uh-huh. Jets are six and ten. You with me, <laughs> Mercado? Six and ten is what it's going to be. Yeah. By the way, so it's probably what it's going to end up. I'm probably going to end up. By the way, give him money. By the way, last <laughs> week, and I'm getting a lot of money there from you at the end of the season. I'm, I'm rolling. Two hundred bucks. I'm rolling in it. By the way, <laughs> he said ten and six. This guy is on. I mean, listen. Thank God they don't drug test here at this radio station because you would fail all day. Because that's all day. terrible, bro. All day. T- we're lucky to get. We're lucky to get to five hundred. If nah, we get. If we bad. get to eight and eight, I'd be. I'd be probably happy. I think we can get to to that nine and seven number. I think we can get to that nine and seven number. Listen, look at the end of the season. Some easy games, bro. You you saw all the games, like soft defenses. No, but did you did you watch the game? Yeah, I watched the game. I watched almost every game. You did? Yeah, they were terrible. Wait, you watched that game? Yeah. I wasn't sure because you're, you're saying something that doesn't make <laughs> sense. So you watched the game. <laughs> Wow, interesting. You're gonna Terry Muller me? <laughs> in, no, I, I'm. I'm. That's very interesting. I don't know how anybody. I mean, listen. If I said that Stevie Wonder told me that, I'd understand because you can't see the game. <laughs> listen. But you're telling me you watch the game? Wow, that's dynamic. That, listen, by the way, that's listen, a high a cu- take. Couple blown plays. Hot couple take. blown plays make make it make a huge difference. I mean, they blew a couple plays. We started to come back. Game within ten points. Two score game. I think that's not bad. I think that's easily a, a, a easy easy turnaround. And I told you, I believe that we split with the Bills this season. Watch. You you still think? I still think they're gonna win the next game. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> it's 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 amazing at what some people, most not just <laughs> most people. 
when they watch their team, right? It's amazing. You got to pick out all the positives. It's amazing the dog poop that will come out of their <laughs> mouth. It's Our cr- special teams didn't suck so bad this year. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm excited. It's, it's something to build on. It's crazy to me. Um, I'm, You know what, dude? I, I, I actually envy you. I'll tell you why. Because you have such blind passion love for something that it does not ever take away or hinder how you feel about it, right? Like You can't. It doesn't. So no matter what happens, you're going to be the guy that just wakes up, puts his Jets jersey on. No matter what. And just says, I love my team. 100%. No matter how much they suck. Yeah. Those guys are also known as idiots. Um, yeah. It's okay, though, bro. You know, it's uh, it, it's got to be great to wake up every day super excited. Ignorance is bliss. It is. I don't. <laughs> I actually I actually wake up every single day, and I, so I, I, I say things like, God, thank you for my family. Thank Absolutely. you for my loved ones and my health. And why, why did you let me love the Cowboys? <laughs> Like, I asked him this question, waiting for an answer. Um, but I, I feel like he did it because it has to be a balancing act, right? Like, everything can't be great. So he's yeah, like, you have dude. good things, so I'm going to give you a shitty team because yeah. you have a pretty, pretty good life. He's you know? like, I mean, we're, we're, you mean you, got, you got the other things. I gave you the, the baby. You, know? yeah. you got the other things in life. You yeah. got things that are important, the family. Yeah. So your team's got to suck. He said, I'm going to bless you with a woman that loves you and a, and a, and a baby that you're going to love and cherish forever. Then I'm gonna piss in your cornflakes and give you the cowboys. Oh yeah, there has like to be balance. Now? A yin and a yang. How you like me now? Yep. Yep. It's <laughs> it's like the justice scale, you know. I know. I, for me, it's it's a lot more lopsided. I have, I have so many good things. I'm like one of those blessed people that just gets lucky on stuff. Like I win the you scratch do. off on the thing. You do. You mean I, I win yeah. a free motorcycle? This I mean, guy. This I catch a ball at the game. I win a bunch of stuff on my first time on your MSR, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a hundred things I win all week. This guy could scratch his ass and win a hundred bucks somewhere. It's what it is. It's it is. Lucky. He's Thank a lucky God. guy. I mean, I'm no, it's true. Yeah, you're blessed. Good for you. So I get three sports teams that suck. Three. <laughs> I have four. Mets, so good Jets, for you. Knicks. I I stopped it at enjoying hockey so that this way I can just be a hockey fan and watch it wow. in enjoyment. Because if I say go Rangers, then they lose. <laughs> so I'm 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 Mets right, Rangers. And I'm the Cowboys, and um, nobody's perfect. No one's perfect, and I'm also the Orlando Magic. Wow. Yeah. So I actually had such uh, such a distaste, such a despise for Michael Jordan when I was younger. When Hardaway the, fan. When the Magic beat the Bulls in the '94 series, I became a Magic fan because I hated Jordan. So I said, <laughs> "Man." Uh, everyone else loved the Bulls, right? Like, that mm-hmm. was the thing. Yep. All my buddies loved the Bulls. They were all, by default, uh, North Carolina fans, <clears throat> right, because of Jordan. And so I was like, I'm going to root against the complete opposite. So somehow, like, every time Duke was on TV, I was all in on Duke. I'm not a Duke fan, but I was all mm-hmm. in on Duke. My just, wife, to be the, just to be the different guy. Just to be the guy. Uh, the, the, the guys across the street, I'll never forget, there was a, a set of brothers, one younger than the other by a year. Biggest Yankee fans you'll ever see in your life. So I became a Met fan. I always hated what people loved, <laughs> dude. I, always. You're the rebel. Rebel. And like rebel without a cause. That's actually how it became like joke on John, mm-hmm. because I was like that idiot that went the opposite way, and the opposite way was always the worst team. So I set myself up for disaster. Myself, I can't blame anybody else. Um, but you know, there's 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 something to say about that. Right, like when you when you watch really bad sports for a long time and you're still a fan of them, it says that you are so dumb <laughs> that you're willing to tough out the bad weather, or you're just watching to learn what not to do. Yeah, it's like I'll teach my daughter things <laughs> like, sweetheart, don't do what daddy did. Right, like I will say things like, it's not monkey see monkey do, it's watch. And see what's good around the area and probably root for that because you'll get much more enjoyment. Um, I actually don't think I'll let my daughter be a Mets fan. I want her to be happy. 
I don't want her to have. And listen, Cohen might change that now. He may. Cohen might change that. We're oh, talking dude, God about willing, that. God willing. God willing. God willing. Absolutely. I, she definitely will not be a Magic fan if she watches basketball. That's dumb. Um, they still have fans? No. No, they don't. They don't. Um, Are you the last member? They have a lot of COVID cases. <laughs> not fans. <laughs> um, I am the last, uh, the last member of the Orlando Magic uh, fan, club. fan club. You're the number one fan. I am the number one fan. Yes, I have a Penny Hardaway and Shaq, Shaq jersey duel framed. I believe it. I do. Uh, that's pretty dope. Um, ninety four, ninety five, baby. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'll, I'll let her be a Ranger fan because the Rangers are are run well, you know. Okay. So that's that's good. But hopefully she'll, hopefully she'll like, um, maybe the Yankees. She'll, maybe she'll like soccer. Do teams suck in soccer? Yes. Some they do. Teams are very bad. Very bad? Yeah. You can be very bad in soccer? Yeah, there's teams that don't score all year. What? Like professional teams? Professionals. That don't score at all. Bro, sometimes they lose games five in a row, and it's one nothing every game. Good defense. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard to score in soccer. But that's good defense. That's legit. So there's hope. That's not totally bad. They just can't kick the ball in the net. I guess. If you weren't super attached they can't to the Jets, bend it like Beckham. If you weren't super attached to the Jets, who would you want your son to root for? If you weren't attached to them, right. what would be the no, team? I'm, I'm attached to them. He roots for them now. Uh, no, I saying, tell but... him all the time. There's times where he sees a team because of a color or something cool that he like. When like when the Miami Dolphins wore their, I mean, all blue uniform with that, you I mean, yeah, teal, teal blue whatever or whatever. Is, yep. You know, he's like, oh, that looks cool, Daddy, and they got a dolphin. I love dolphins. It's great. You, you can when you get older and you know what these teams do, then you can pick what team you want to be. Right now, you root for the Jets. Yeah. But when you get older, you make your decision. But if if and he, I'll respect it. If he had to pick a team, right? If you want, like. You're not going to encourage him. You're going to encourage him to watch the Jets because so you could root together. But if you had to encourage him to watch an NFL team, who would it be? Green Bay. It'd be Green Bay. Green Bay. I've had a lot of respect for Green Bay. I'm, the- oddly, bro, for me, crazy, it'd be the Giants. You want to know why? Home team? Yeah, so we could watch <clears> the <throat> games. You know, I, I feel like that's the one thing that I really missed out on a lot. Being able to go to the games and tailgate all the time. Oh, it's it's the best. I used to be a season ticket holder for the Jets. Yeah, man. It, like, I mean, going to the game, whether we win or lose, doesn't matter. Especially everybody else. Everybody who's going to the game has got that mentality. That that win, lose, or tie, green and white till I die. We go out there. We all share food. It's amazing. I love tailgating. Corona. Um, well, now. But I, I, it would be the Giants or it would be the Baltimore Ravens. I feel like that's a very good franchise. I like the Ravens. Always stays young, gritty. Mm-hmm. I like that. Absolutely. Raven, Raven, Ravens, their tough, men, tough mentality yeah. and the things that they instill in their players. They remind me of the uh, the eighties Knicks, the late eighties Knicks. That didn't like win no either. nobody wants. Yeah, but they get they get to the they get to the thing. Nobody wants. They're a formidable defense. Nobody wants to play against them. They're very rough house, punch you in the face. You know I mean, kind of football. But again, since. Uh, since what was that? 2012. Um, yeah, 2012. 2012, I think the Ravens haven't been there. If I if I had to, if I had to pick a hockey team, I'd still say Rangers. If I had to pick a baseball team, definitely Yankees. Um, and if I had to pick a basketball team. Probably the Boston Celtics. Respectable. Feel like there's a lot of history. I'd go Lakers. You go Lakers. Ma- I'm a big Magic Johnson fan. Big Magic Johnson fan. Um, you know, obviously, like Magic's the man. Um, Absolutely. But like Larry Bird, very easily relatable to pasty white guy. <laughs> Makes me feel like I can shoot threes when I'm on the court. Like you mm-hmm. know, like I can connect. Um, it's easy for me to say, like, you know, when you watch Larry with the short shorts and he looks like he literally just got off the couch. Yep. You're like, yo, if Larry could do it, I could do it. Right? Absolutely. Like Magic Johnson, wa- Magic Johnson was, was an athlete, bro. Like you looked at him, he, he was, was a smooth. stud. He was smooth. Yeah. Like, uh, too, too smooth. like I expect Magic Johnson to be a beast, right? I look at, I look at Larry Bird and I'm like, what? You know? Like, look at that Celtics team, bro. They, uh, bro, 
Mikhail. Mikhail. Was Are you serious? Mikhail looked like a like a. When a you t- looked at him, he did not pass the eye test. Hundred percent. He <laughs> did Mik- not pass the eye. Mikhail looked like a tall doctor. He's one of those guys that if you didn't see him play, you'd look at him and go, well, "I guess he's tall." That's it. Looks like Lurch. Yeah. <laughs> no, he looked like Sean Bradley. <laughs> Sean Bradley was terrible. So like, like the thing is, is like I I just I look at it and it, you know. It's like this short five foot eight white guy who likes to shoot three pointers. You're like, you're like, oh, Larry Bird's my dude, right? So obviously, I look at a guy like Magic. I could see why, like Showtime. Absolutely, I get it, bro. I get it. You know, so you you wanna you you wanna do that. Uh, you wanna be there, but I'd have to go. I just have to go Celtics as the heritage. I mean, listen, I'm definitely, I'm going to encourage the teams that I have because I'd like to be able to root. On game day, up together, and, yeah. together. That's good. That, that's absolutely what I like. About but I, but I also feel as a parent, I this is actually abuse. You gotta let them. Yeah, you gotta let them choose. Because what they want. if they choose the shitty teams that I have, I'm abusing my kids. Yeah, that's and, not fair. And then imagine we don't win again for the next fucking twenty years. But They're that, gonna be like, why the fuck? I like, yeah. I don't know. My dad likes, and they'd be telling their friends, I don't know. I really like the Patriots, but I hate the Jets. Yeah, I would hate that if he said that. You know that's I mean? child abuse. That would burn me. That would burn me though. That's child abuse. Any team except for the Patriots, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, I don't like anything New England. Nah, but think about this. I respect the Celtics. The re- Celtics, right. the only organization, I mean, major league organization that out of, out of I mean, Boston that I respect. You ready for it, dude? Think about this. Anybody who lets their kid be an Eagles fan <laughs> is knowingly making their child a bad human being, right? Like that's how I feel. like Philly fans Shout are. Out, <laughs> ba- like Philly fans are bad people, right? Like Terrible. I saw Will Taylor in here. Terrible. I saw Casey Smith. Like the like like you guys somewhere down in your core are just not good people, right? So like I because you're a Philly fan and by default like you're okay with throwing batteries at Santa Claus. They're an angry bunch. Yeah, angry, angry bunch. bunch. They're very violent. So like I I have to call the spade a spade here and just say like this is these are not good human beings overall. So like I will definitely steer my child away from liking anything Philadelphia. Wasn't enough that you threw the beer on me. Yeah. Soaked me. You got to beat me up in the parking lot, burn my jersey. Yeah, like, like, come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's always something it's a rough bad. out there, man. You know, and, and I always hear a lot of like crazy stories out in Oakland. Um, I always hear like Oakland is rioting or whatever. Like, not rioting. Like in the in the in the parking lot after games, they're like stabbing each other. The fans are crazy. Like, I, I don't need any of that, dude. That's just against their own, though. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I don't need any. They're of like that. sadistic. You ever seen that crowd? The black hole. <laughs> yeah. But, like, here's the thing, That's though. a lifestyle, bro. That's not even... But, like, San Francisco <laughs> Giant fans and Oakland fans, like, kill each other. Bro, it's very crazy. Like, I don't... I don't. You can't take your fanhood that serious, man. No. You can make jokes, get it exciting, but you can't... Listen, everybody's out there just to have a good time. You got people losing their minds in a parking lot for no reason. It's a game. I mean, if you lost money, should have been on the other team. Listen, I, don't take it out on me. Like, dude, if the team... If the team starts to pay my bills... I'm definitely gonna go crazy for them. Yeah, but then, then, then you got something else. You know? Yeah, I mean, if you you're part of the organization, you get paid for it. It's your job. Like, it's listen, different. if the Dallas Cowboys paid me money and said something like, "You have to be a fanatic," I'm also stabbing people in the parking lot. But I don't know if I'm stabbing people. No, nah, I'm lot. I'm quietly doing it. But I'm just saying, you know, a little, you know what I mean? A little, a little, little flat tire here, there, yeah, a little bit, a little no flat bit. tire slash watch, slash something. No big deal, you know. <laughs> You walk by with a little underneath. But property damage. Yeah, hey, no big deal. So, uh, you know, anybody with a... Anybody- I could see you, miss. Could you do me a favor? Just stand still. They're paying me to do this. Just act like I cut you, okay? Just walk. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> I'm I'm very sorry about your car. They're paying my bills. I'm super sorry. But I, I said just... you check for the tire. I'm just saying, for me, it's, it's, a, it's, a tough, it's a tough gimmick, you know, but someone has to do it. And until they start paying my bills, it's not going to happen. So I'm definitely not in a, out in the parking lot. I'm not upset about anything. I'm not doing any of that. And that's just the way it works. So until then, uh, you know, sports will never be that that crazy for me. But either way, it is what it is. It's 5.50 here, right? What's, dude, Did what, we go over fantasy? what's today's date? Well, I mean, we, it's September 16th. Look. We drafted teams last week. We wanted to go over it. I had a I, I had my rant in the beginning. It's all right. We went deep. Um, That's and, what she said. Yep, yeah, always. And uh, 
and whether or not she made it up doesn't matter as long as she says it. You're good. Hi-yo. And, uh, you know, and we wanted to talk fantasy. What I'm going to tell you fantasy-wise is this. My late Darius Slayton pick, stud. My Monster co- sleeper. My, my, Monster I said it, sleeper. but I said it, though. I said, I said, I am, I'm drafting this guy. I cannot believe he's still on the board. He was a stud for the Giants last year. Daniel Jones loves this guy. And that it is what it is, you know? So, by the way, I have to, we have another phone call? We got a phone call. With 10 minutes left? Who's on the line? Let's see who it is. Hello? 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 Who do we have here? Big Pat, what's up, man? Oh, Big 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 Pat Pat. to close the segment out. Pat, I'm not sure which part of this show you're calling about, so talk to us, man. Well, so I'm calling on behalf of the whole, you know, if my kid had to root for this team or that team, who would it be? Yep, this would be good. You guys always tease me about this, and it's true. If you root for all 32 teams, you never have to worry about this. No. I mean, it's just the perfect logic. By the way, Pat lives that in his daily life. So everybody, yes. so everyone knows we, we, we talk about this frequently. Big Pat is, uh, is somewhat of a legend on Taco Tuesdays, uh, for anybody who doesn't know. Um, OG. He is an OG. Pat lives in Florida, and he roots for everybody except the Eagles and the Patriots, right? Am, am I correct there? Good man. You're definitely correct on the Patriots. Yes. Okay. Uh, bye bye. Get him out of here. So he has 31 <laughs> favorite teams, but this is why Pat is actually the smartest human being alive. Because Pat's never disappointed on Sundays. Absolutely. He no, wins no matter what. To. No matter exactly. 50 50 shot. So Pat, honestly, yeah, exactly. honestly though, listen, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this. Even though you 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 do root for many teams, when one day, God willing, you have you have a kid that loves sports, right? You live right. you live in the Jacksonville area, so you watch Jacksonville, but you are a very big Bronco fan. If your yes. kid, if you had to steer your child in a direction of a team for them to watch, who would it be? Jaguars, hundred percent. Wow! And simply for the fact that I have, it is a struggle to try and get Denver sports in Jacksonville, Florida. It is it is an absolute struggle, and the fact that. We could go to the games. We can uh, interact with the players. It's not just somebody on a TV screen. It's somebody you can go to a parking lot and beat. So you'd make her a homer. I them to be a Jaguar fan. You'd encourage her to be a homer. Homer. Okay. Exactly. I mean, listen. I mean, I, I, I like my Broncos for silly reasons. I mean, obviously, I'm a huge Gator fan. You know this. Being from Florida. Obviously, Tebow goes Tebow. to the Broncos. <laughs> that was probably the main reason I even started watching the NFL was Tebow went to the Broncos. But it's the best part it about the having uh, Beat my you know, Jacksonville here is that literally I never miss a game. I can watch the games. There'll, there'll be two or three games in a row where I can't even watch the Broncos play because they're based in Denver. By the way, so it's got to be, it's gotta be so nice. It's got to be so nice I mean, as a Jacksonville fan knowing you can actually go to the stands and probably buy front row seats for $8. Thank oh, you. Yeah, Come again. right now. Like, I, I, I got to be great. People can't get rid of their tickets fast enough. It's but you know what? That's okay. Because you I can make money buying tickets. absolutely thought Jacksonville was going to do pay nothing you. this year. Yeah. Jacksonville. And then all of a sudden, Gardner Minshew goes 19, 19 to 20 for almost 200 and three tutties. What? <laughs> yep. Minshew mania. Forget about I mean, it. I mean, Mustache mania. I, I, you know what? To touch on something from earlier in the show, uh, and this is also for Terry Mullet. I would take Gardner Minshew in a heartbeat over Dak Prescott. Amen. That, that's what I was going to cut in Amen. and say. Absolutely, man. Amen. I'm with you. Thank you for bringing that up, Pat. Amen. Amen. By, by the way. One, knows how to win. Two, incredible mustache. And three, much yes. better passer, apparently. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. All, by it's, the way. He probably has better balance because of the stash. All three great. Exactly. All three great, great points. Listen, I, I, I think at this point, you know where I stand. I would take a garbage can over Prescott because <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't have yeah, to a pay. Show. I wouldn't have to pay a garbage can as much. And nope. at least I know that if I'm going to lose, I'm losing with both. 
So I'm saving money yeah. and I can put it somewhere else. So, exactly. uh, you know, for me, it's very, very simple. Um, At least my garbage can's got some wheels. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, (laughs) wow. That's a good one. (laughs) Give me some. Wow. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it is is what it is. Pat, I'm going to ask you this before we actually get out of here so Talking Baseball can jump on here. Atlanta Braves, how do you feel about them? I I have positives and I have concerns. The positives, our bats can stay hot. We, I mean, good gracious, we put up 29 runs against the Marlins. Casey Smith actually texted me and said, did you see the score? I go, no. I look at the score. I'm like, what, what, am I watching football? Yeah, I What's think I said the Padres here? before. It was and, the, uh, it was you know, the, that was an Braves. incredible night. Our bats have been getting hot. Ozzy Albies is back healthy. Acuna is back healthy. Bats are hot. It looks great. But my goodness gracious, when we are on defense and our pitchers have to throw them the ball, I am holding my breath. I'm just praying that, well, try to keep it in the park, please. That's all I ask. If the bets stay no, consistent, I think they'll have, they'll have the pitchers back, but I still yeah. don't, don't think they're going to stay that hot. They're, uh, they're not scoring 29 runs. I'm staying consistent with my pick on talking baseball. Before the season started, I still think the Padres win it. Um, it was a pick that I had made on that show. I just felt that a, a, mar- a, a, very, a very quick sprint – to the finish line would benefit a young team that doesn't have to think about longevity right. and how many games and oh, they speaking get, of how many get next show we're gonna have to talk about the new uh the eight we got the eight, eight, eight team uh, eight team playoffs. bubble right for baseball yep. there's a lot to talk about next show for sure um you know as long as nothing happens between then and and, and now that i have to melt down about but I, uh, you know, for me, it was, I got you back. it was, uh, you know, it's definitely, it just made sense. The Padres, but Pat, I got to admit, Padres. I got to admit good. your, your, your Braves, um, your Braves also look good, man. So listen, good luck. Yep. Good luck coming up. Good luck coming up in baseball. Good luck coming up in the NFL this season. Um, yes, sir. and, uh, hopefully some things turn around here, and uh, and and we they can really start to capture us as fans and start to deliver some good, yes. man. Absolutely, bro. For Thank sure. For sure. Give me a reason. Nice Thank talking you. to you guys. I'll Give catch me the y'all good later. reasons. That's you got right. it, Big Pat. Thank you, brother. PP. Guys and much. guys and girls, Wednesday, September sixteenth. Um, I'm here for the third straight week uh, with the man that is slowly becoming my co-pilot here, Daniel Mercado. Uh, another. I'm flattered. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Another week. Um, happy to have you on with me. Uh, appreciate it because if you weren't here, I would have just walked off before with dead air and nobody else here to uh, at least talk on the air, man. So I appreciate you for that, bro. Thank you. Oh, when I say I'm with you, I mean I'm with you. Amen. Guys and girls, listen, uh, you know, it, he, it looks like he's going to be back for week number four. So I'm going to I'll say you're going to catch us in six days. 22 hours right here on hamiltonradio.net channel 2 get the app simulcast on my sports radio on facebook you're listening to your boy john Antel and my co-pilot daniel mercado come get some we'll catch you later msr's out peace you're rocking with the newest radio show on hamilton radio my sports radio deals and bonds hit right high it's a deal Sports Radio, and here's your host, Sean Intel.